O'Neill for Severe MMA and we are on location at Hulahan Martial Arts and I'm with Shauna Bannon after her big win at Invicta 52 against Mina Grishander. Shauna, how are you? It's good to meet you in person. I know, I know, finally. Finally, <laughs> Not finally. Not sure was screaming anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know, everyone is saying I'm actually real. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are things? Like, look, at, I said it to you and we were talking on Twitter and stuff like that. I thought that your last performance was your best performance of your career really today do you kind of feel that way yeah 100% um, I was just very relaxed I was having fun like I was enjoying it I was I slowed down a little bit to be honest I was a little bit nervous with the altitude I thought I was kind of gassed so I was like great right, slow down pace yourself whereas normally I go out hell for leather mm. and it actually worked in my favour because I was able to see things a lot clearer my kicks were landing my shots were landing I could defend the takedowns because my game plan in this was I knew she was going to try and take me down yeah. and like I was comfortable if it went to the ground but I was like no I kind of want to just pick her apart with me striking and I've been working lots going into southpaw the body kicks the head kicks switching it up and I just think everything that I had prepared for actually happened in the cage so I was really happy with it. Yeah talk about that preparation obviously we'll talk about maybe in the altitude te tent and stuff like that but like you know you said a lot of things didn't go your way ahead of your last fight. Yeah. What was kind of different heading into this fight with your training camp? Um, I think there was like a proper structure at the start of the camp and I had everything in place from me conditioning, me diet, me jiu-jitsu striking, everything was set in place and there was kind of like no campus smell, there's always hiccups, there's always niggles, there's always something that pops in the way but there was, my last camp was just fucking mad so like in comparison to that I think if I got through that one I knew I could get through anything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though there was the altitude tent and all involved and that was really hard because Jace was waking up through the night crying to get into me in the tent and yeah. I couldn't get out because he had to be in it for at least 12 hours a day yeah. so like that was really tough because like looking at me son crying through a fucking tent and oh, I can't help I him is like it's just it was it was hard but I got through it and it was like I knew I had to do what I was prepared for it mentally and we just we got through that and the camp like other than that it was it was fairly smooth like a couple of little niggles but it was perfect yeah like I actually didn't realise with the altitude tent you know something it was only when you did the interview before the fight when you were saying how difficult it was for you and I can I can't imagine how difficult it was for you yeah. being in there as well but I'm sure you were getting help from friends and family along the way as well but yeah. uh, like those are the kind of sacrifices that nobody sees behind the scenes really aren't they? Yeah 100% and you think like that that doesn't affect you but then I even felt like it was affecting Jace. Yeah. Do you know like the, the crush was like has anything changed to home and all and I was like oh for oh, fuck's sake that poxy <laughs> yeah, yeah. I swear to God but I had to do it like I didn't want to go over there and not be prepared and you could see the difference in people there was a couple of fights that was last minute on mm -hmm. the show they only got popped in that week and you can see how they gassed their faces were purple they were just looking at each other they weren't able to throw shots and that's the difference of the preparation it's obviously not 100% the same as being in Denver yeah. but it mimics it to the certain degree that your body adapts like I could see there was it was all to peak that I got the tent through and they monitored me throughout the whole thing my heart rate my oxygen levels everything and you can see throughout each every day like my body is adapting and adapting and I'm changing it lower 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 and then by the final week I was on the lowest that it was and my body was 100% adapted so yeah. like I felt that in the cage and it was worth it in the end because I got the win do you yeah. know what I mean it was noticeable though to see it from the, the pri fight previously to this one here now like you did look like you were getting tired in, in the fight previously at Invicta 51 but you look fresh as a daisy at yeah. the end of this fight as well so like obviously the sacrifices and, and doing what the, you did they obviously paid off anyway yeah. so could you, you obviously felt that benefit in there as well oh 100% and like I'll definitely keep I won't be sleeping in the tent now but I'll be the other altitude training that I was doing so I was like running with the, the machine on. and I was in the altitude chambers doing like interval sessions like high intensity mm. um, so I'm definitely going to keep that in my training going forward because 100% help to my fitness I think I was more composed in this fight as well compared to previous fights I might have rushed them um, whereas towards the end of my amateur career it was like I just didn't care and I was like let's go and I felt a lot comfortable then but then when I went to the pro it was like can't lose can't lose can't lose yeah. can't lose do you know what I mean and then you kind of forget to just actually do what you do best sometimes like I felt like I was nearly panicking taking people down and holding them and then ground and pound just so I knew I was in a safe position yeah. do you know what I mean but whereas in that fight I just felt safe the whole time and I was composed I could see 
see her body movements when she was coming at me when she wasn't and the, I think there was like the last round for about 10 seconds I kind of you can see me switching off for a second and then I switch back on yeah but the rest of the fight like I, I felt perfect but like it must be difficult as well because obviously you, you put the work in the altitude chest but you haven't put the practice yet either like yeah, so yeah, well, yeah. did you find it difficult with your output but like one thing I said was that your footwork and your patience was very good I loved your feints in the fight as well mm. like you said patience is the perfect word to describe your striking in that fight against yeah. Mina yeah no patience is definitely something I struggle with <laughs> everything <laughs> even like if I don't have a, foot, uh, a fight booked I'm like Paddy 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 he's like really relaxed <laughs> it's gonna happen I'm like yeah but have you got the contract <laughs> it's a science play it like I, ha I have no patience when it comes yeah. to things like that I'm like I need it now and I need to know the plan for the whole year and what's gonna happen and he's like MMA doesn't work like that I'm like but why because <laughs> yeah. in kickboxing I'd get a calendar at the start of the year and I'd know this is where I'm going to fight blah 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 and you'd be able to plan your year around the calendar yeah. whereas MMA is fucking random lads. And this is, but it's the same in amateur MMA as yeah. well especially what you were doing you were fighting pretty much on a regular basis as well as it, like that must be a big adjustment for you where you kind of want to get in and even at that you're not doing too bad now 5-0 oh yeah, in less no, than a year you I know, know? I know. and then hopefully I'll be 6-0 in less than 12 months so <laughs> that is fast like, and I know it is but yeah. it doesn't feel like it when you're <laughs> no, I'm no. like a more, more, more. Yeah, and even yeah. this year, Paddy was like, "You'll probably only have three, three fights this year." But I think already, I know I'm gonna have four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's already kind of lined out, so I'm like, "I knew I'd have four. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, I noticed a few elbows that came into play as well. Uh, you were always talking about throwing those elbows, and you start start bringing them in as well. Yeah. You know, is that some of the work that you've been doing here at Hulan Martial, Art, Martial Arts, bringing that kind of your knees and your elbows into play? And I've seen you doing some work with Collie as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So so I'd be working a lot on my elbows with um, Paddy and Collie, the two of them really, and I kind of like adapted me range because I think I was kind of squashing me range a lot in my last few fights so it was a bit more long range and then landing the elbows in between and on the ground and in the clinch mm -hmm. so I've been working a lot on that I still don't think it's anywhere near where I want it to be but it's improving yeah yeah <laughs> like I'm like grand in like pads and sparring or whatever like I'm like I obviously don't mill the people I'm sparring but like I have it in me in my mind but whereas in fights it's kind of like I just I'd like a few more elbows to land now in fairness like our face did bust up there like from one of the elbows and I was like lovely because you don't even have to, like, it's not even much in them. It's just no. those little short elbows mark so much, and I, I need to throw more of them. We were watching the PFL last night, like, and they don't have the ability to throw elbows in the Are, are they not allowed? They're not allowed, no, no. And it's like, I think it's, like, due to the tournament format. Right. But it's a game changer when you're looking at it, when you're looking at a fight from, you know, like, ground and pound can do damage, but the elbows are, like, deal breakers, like, with oh, cuts 100%. and stuff like that. Like, even my last fight with Kerry, let's say, when I had her amount, if I had to throw an elbows there, it would have got stopped. Mm -hmm. Looking back and I'm like but then I'm like right I got three rounds in the bank and you learn from that as well so yeah. there is pros and cons to both of it but now when I'm in mount now it's just elbows no punches yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're there's gra bands <laughs> <laughs> your grappling too is, is still jumping leaps and bounds as yeah, well yeah, and that's yeah. probably down to the hours of work you're doing here with Paddy like it must be unreal to kind of get that one on one with him because geez like I don't really know of someone better that you could go in there yeah. and get that experience no 100% and he's like the perfect weight as well he's safe mm. he's not Spazzy, he's a black belt, he has all the knowledge in the world, and it's not just jiu jitsu knowledge, it's jiu jitsu for MMA. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's literally the best person in the country that I could be working with. I have in my corner for jiu jitsu. 100%. So, yeah. like, very grateful for that. Yeah. Very 100%. grateful. <laughs> so, after your fight, Danny fought for the title as well. You were watching on from the yeah. sidelines. What was your experience, and, and, and how did you find watching that from the sidelines? It was unreal. Yeah, the atmosphere was great, and like, it was great to see her come back from that knockdown because mm. I was like, when that happened, I was like, bollocks I just had a vision of when she got knocked out in Bellator that time yeah like, against no, Stephanie no, no, no. Page yeah. but then you could see her recovering and then after that she won the last four rounds mm. like I, in my opinion the last four rounds were hers so yeah, the first round was a bad round but she came back from it and recovered and won the fight she done what she needed to do to win the fight 100% 100% and no, I thought it was like you know great to see you kind of there supporting and, and, and everything like that obviously in the fight game everyone is pitted against everybody as well but you know I was actually 
actually speaking with her yesterday uh, in SBG and you know she she made a couple of good points about the two years fighting like you're more interested in getting the Invicta title that's that's what you're interested yeah. in like it's just Danny has it right now the two yeah. you're in the same division like so there's not any real true animosity there it's just the competitive rivalry mm. that you have that she basically has what you want right now Danny kind of said you know there's a lot more for her to lose right now by taking that fight for the Invicta title in regards to where she's at in her career in comparison to where you are at in your career would you yeah. kind of agree with that yeah 100% she's obviously near more the end of her career she's been fighting a long time and I'm at the start of my career I'm only professional not even a year so 100% she has more on the line and um, she's the champion as well so the champion always has more on the line no matter what the position is um, but I do think that the fight has to happen like if it if it wasn't going to happen beforehand it definitely needs to happen now and I've kind of got the nod that it is going to happen so um, I can tell that she's not interested in the fight and look it is what it is it, we're in the same division we're for, in the same company like it's kind of inevitable like I know we're from the same country but like I don't really think that that's the reason for us not to fight, to be honest. Right, right. Me yeah. personally, like, yeah, that's I have goals where I want to be, I have a son to provide for, I have like set in my head what it is that I want to do before I go to the UFC, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that it needs to be ticked off. She's the champion now. I'm 5-0, and oh. I think I deserve a title shot at this stage of my career. I've had two great performances on Invicta, I have three other fights before that, and like, yeah. it is what it is. And look at, between your performance and Danny's performance, you almost sealed the deal for an Invicta show in Ireland next year. Yeah. Like, there's pretty strong, like obviously not in his official right now or, or fully confirmed, but like all the talk that's coming from Shannon and Invicta, they're saying they want to come here later next year they want to come here yeah. <laughs> they want to come here the whole staff wants to come to Dublin so yeah no and I, I do think that it is something that's going to be done before the summer of this year um, and yeah like it is what it is one way like, I, I have no bad blood against any dirt like there has been things that's happened in the past and I was kind of like but it is what it is yeah. do you know what I mean it, like it's the fight game yeah like we were in the same corner we were warming up in the same area like yeah I was like best of luck to her. There was like a little speech going on. She was doing one of the infields and it was on playing before the uh, show had started. And I was like, look, fair play to her. Look, she's after getting her title shot. It is what it is. I hope she wins. She went out and won. Best of luck. I was cheering her on. I wanted her to win. Yeah. Like I wanted Danny to win that fight. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, like I was screaming for her in the corner and I was like, I want her to do this. And like, it was unreal. I had goosebumps when she won. I was delighted for her. Yeah. Um, but it's my turn next. 100%. <laughs> and if that were to happen, look at one way or another look Danny has hinted that maybe she's looking to try and get to the UFC that that be that would be well within her rights if she wanted to go over there as the champion yeah one way or another I feel that whether it's Danny or whether it's a vacant title Ireland that's where you should be fighting next for the title what would it mean for you for them to come over here and there's talks of the basketball arena there's talks of maybe the helix plus the basketball arena and tell it that's where you want to end <laughs> that's it that's where I want to be now I want to have it there I fall I probably was as young as five fighting there for the first time yeah. so to go back and fight for a world title with Invicta with the best female promotion in the world like Beyond there's really. no even words for it. is yeah. there really like in my hometown fighting for a world title and legit world title you know mm -hmm. um, yeah no it'd be unreal unreal last night you were at your dad's telemartial arts 30th year anniversary is I that know. right yeah That's yeah crazy yeah. is it unreal like it was look they had like photos all over the walls from years back and I was literally like at the hall back to tears I was yeah. like the memories that I have in that club like I was talking to one of the girls Lisa her dad is like owners with my dad as well and and I was like, Lisa, like, what? She was like, Shonda, that feels like a different lifetime ago. Like, we were naming all the tournaments because kickboxing the tournaments would be in the same places every year. So we'd yeah. go to Italy, we'd go to Austria. They were always the same locations. And we go back and back. And it was just the trips and experiences that I had as a child. It was unbelievable. Like, yeah. not every kid got to have that. And I'm so grateful that I did. I got to travel the world from a very young age, compete and doing what I loved. Even when I didn't take it seriously and I was messing, like, I didn't take it seriously until I was about 11 or 12. Right. Before that, I was a little bitch of a child. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Um, yeah, but like, unreal, very good. Like, uh, seeing the amount of world champions that Talon Martial Arts has, has produced over the years, and all of them there, like, from all the different, like, it was like 30 years, and I was like, I'm a part of all them three generations. I'm so <laughs> old! Because <laughs> my dad opened the gym the year I was born, and I was like, it's just giving me reminders. That's my 30th this year. I gotta say something. <laughs> it catches up on you quick, I, I can know. tell you that for sure. As well. Oh, I was like, fuck's sake. But yeah, no, it was unbelievable the last night and uh, my dad and Dave they both got awarded their seven degree black belt by Roy Baker the president of Kickbox in Ireland oh, wow. so it was it was unreal. It was unreal. Yeah. Like you were walking in there as a young a young kid like and you're dreaming of going places and doing things and, and now you're kind of turning those dreams into reality. Like it's kind of all coming full circle for you now really isn't 100%, it? hundred percent yeah. Like when I was younger my dream was always to go to the Olympics. That's what I wanted to be an Olympian. I was like Olympics, Olympics, Olympics and like kickboxing to get into the Olympics it's so complicated there's fucking step 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 so they've been going through it for years and then I kind of came to the realisation that it wasn't going to be in it in my time and I was like I, like I was adamant I wanted to go so I was like what sport can I do and then that's how I led into Taekwondo yeah. um, but it just wasn't for me like I just yeah. missed punching it was very traditional the, the real sets like it was just yeah it was weird like you'd kick someone on their hole and you wouldn't get a point for it because the magnet wouldn't hit the magnet on the body armour right. and I was like this is stupid yeah yeah, yeah. I'm after knocking this person down, like give me a score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was actually Paddy was it was when he was moving the gyms and he had nowhere to train. So he was training in TMA doing jiu jitsu. He was training in the where I was doing taekwondo and like that was how I kind of clicked it. Like I always knew of MMA because of Connor more so, mm -hmm. but I never watched it or anything. Right. And I remember like seeing a jiu jitsu class and I was like the fuck is going on there like it was like it looked mad to me because yeah. I, I had never seen it before but then I was kind of like just getting a little bit away of taekwondo I was just like I couldn't and I was like do I go back to kickboxing but I kind of had was that, a, was that kind of a difficult time for you like where you yeah. had that goal or that dream to go to the Olympics and then it kind of goes out the window a little bit doesn't it and you're kind of in this kind of area where you don't know where you're going to go next I guess yeah like I think you need to have a passion for it like if you're yeah. not or you need to enjoy it at least yeah. and if you're not enjoying it it just takes the fun out of it and you see some people are like that with MMA and maybe it's like they're going too long in it or they're they don't take little breaks or whatever it is you see it in all sports people just like kind of getting blown out and they're like I can't do this anymore I just didn't have the love for the taekwondo yeah. I was like and then I was like do I go back to kickboxing but I had done everything there was to do I had won the world multiple times the Europeans the combat games was the pinnacle of it I had won that and that was not like they still haven't had another combat game since the one I won so it's yeah. not like it's a regular thing you can go back and win it again so I was just like what what do you do and then I was like do you know what I'm going to just try jiu jitsu do it for fun not be competitive and sure the second time I was here I was doing the MMA and I was like oh I'm going pro on this you're hooked like, straight away <laughs> yeah, isn't it yeah. literally so like I just think it's like like I loved kickboxing I really it was like I've done it since I was three like I've done it for like maybe my whole life mm. I loved it but the love that I have for MMA it's just I can literally express myself as a martial artist the grappling the wrestling the jiu jitsu everything it's just I love it yeah it's great I'm obsessed and all of the work that you had did in your dad's gym and everything like that we even seen that in your last fight when the knee bar as well people yeah. were saying how didn't you tap it she said <laughs> thanks to Martin Bannon <laughs> you get me to do the split since you're very literally, young literally yeah I was like because everyone was like oh do you have to take a few weeks off for the knee and all and I was like and then I remember I, ah that's grand it wasn't even on uh, yeah, it was yeah. like a hamstring stretch <laughs> I was like that's lovely thanks throw a few shots get a little rest <laughs> yeah fair play Martin fair play for that <laughs> pushing me into the splits for years paid off <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so look at you got home after after Invicta 52 uh, obviously seeing Jason must have been great to get back and connect with him again yeah um, like how long do you take to kind of enjoy wins or like your person like you're coming here you're sparring again today we're 10 days out from that fight now you're re right back into the mix again yeah no I like I literally I was only saying this after the fight I was like when you win you get high the next day it's gone yeah it's gone for me because I'm thinking like this is my stepping stone it's not the pinnacle of where I want to be so each fight that I'm having right now yeah I'm happy that I'm after winning 100% but I'm not I'm thinking of next mm. like I'm like right that's done now what's next do you know what I mean whereas if you have a loss 
the loss stays with you forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like even you'll win your next fight and you'll still be like that fucking loss. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I lost when I was pregnant and I had such a long time before I could come back mm-hmm. to redeem myself. Like it was literally like two years nearly and then COVID happened and then the fight was cancelled again and I had to wait another few months and yeah. that was a long time. Right. And I was just like, for fuck's sake, that boxy loss. <laughs> like yeah. that still annoys me that loss to this day. Yeah, it's I'm like, crazy how that happens. Yeah. Yeah, so like a loss is like way wor- win. It's like yeah, right, okay, next. Uh, like there obviously is certain wins that are more important to others. Like my first win back after Jace, like that was a special yeah. win, and I was buzzing and I was delighted. But I was thinking next. Yeah, but like that's why, like losses, you learn so much more from them because you know you're constantly going over it in your head. What can I do better? What should I have done better? You're talking about your preparation to yourself, everything like that. So that's that's you know losses are never great. You never want to have a loss. Yeah. But that's why you kind of get obsessed with the loss and that you have that obsession to get better then. Yeah, like you sh- I think you, you should be upset when you lose. Yeah. Like it's a real thing. Like if you're happy when you lose, you're probably not doing the right thing. Like, do you know what I mean? It's not, yeah. you're not there. You do learn from it and it is a, an experience in itself, but like you, you definitely shouldn't be happy. It should be a thing where you go home and have your little shower crying at like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not a good time. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm actually getting angry now thinking about that loss. <laughs> I'm freaked. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. we, we move on. Then we move on. <laughs> Touchy subjects. <laughs> so um, look at. Um, I don't know how much you can say about it, but I've seen you taking pictures in front of a cage where you're signed. <laughs> I've seen pictures of yellow gloves. I've seen you tagging the tree arena uh, on your Instagram and on your Twitter and stuff yeah. like that. What can you tell us? Um, I'll be fighting soon. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick tour around. I'll be fighting in five weeks, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, you take that for what you will, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say think something will be announced soon in anyway, so yeah. Perfect, yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. perfect. Well, we'll be on, we'll be on to you then whenever it is uh, confirmed as well. But um, what is the rest of the year? Look, you want, obviously you want to stay uh, competitive and, and active. And like, are you looking to get two, three, four? Like, how many fights are you looking to get before the end? of the year because look we're only in coming into April now so it's still early days yeah I reckon another three fights before the end of the year mm-hmm. 100% they're already kind of lined out for me yeah yeah <laughs> so you'd be looking maybe one back home maybe another one in Invicta and then I think they might all be back home oh yeah well I guess yeah if Invicta yeah. do come back yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. geez so, that'd be nice as well no traveling no traveling like yeah no debt lag <laughs> yeah yeah it's like rotten coming out. oh go no over it's fresh it's coming back you'd be just like two days in you're like Falling asleep. Oh, uh, stop! I know about from coming yeah, over. As yeah, well. yeah, It's worse coming over this way, to be honest, than it think? is going back. I yeah. definitely do. I definitely do. But um, look at then. Look at all things go to plan. You're talking about seven and zero, eight and zero. Look at and in an ideal world, at the end of this year, you're eight and zero maybe, and you have an Invicta title around your waist. Like you're looking at the UFC then, really, are you next yeah. year? Yeah, maybe even this maybe, year. Maybe even this year too. Yeah. What avenues would you like? Like we have contender series. We have a couple of different avenues in are you interested in something like a contender series or do you just want to go straight in I think like um, if I win the Invicta title and I'm 7 and 0 then mm. I don't really think I need to do contenders mm-hmm. I think the opportunities are going to come to me Yeah, I agree. they have came to me my whole career like I was panicking at the start and Paddy was like it's going to just all work out and it actually has <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything is just happening in my favour so like I am the whole journey is amazing and I'm like loving every day of it it's great yeah. it's great I won't keep you too much longer I appreciate the time it's been great to meet you in person yeah. you know you're going sparring now soon enough so we'll let you we'll let you away for that but thanks for taking the time myself and Andy were looking at the limousine party bus there outside we're thinking <laughs> About, we're thinking about getting onto it there for the rest of the day. It's very tempting. Do the tour. Yeah, we're on it, are you? <laughs> for me, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> oh, stop. But uh, yeah, we will leave it there for now. Look at uh, we can expect to see Sean a fighting soon in Dublin. Um, look at we'll keep it, keep an eye on Severe MMA. Maybe we'll be chatting and, and when things are confirmed, we can uh, we can set that in stone. But for now, uh, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure to get to talk to you, Sean. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Thank you.